Hi everyone! Today we will learn how to create plaids in Photoshop. Before we start, I just want to remind you how important are your opinions and feedbacks for me. So please subscribe to my channel if you still didn't and please like it if you still didn't and please don't forget to check your bell if you are subscribed already. And now we are starting. So what is the difference between plaid and print? As we know already, print is a result of printing on the solid fabric, whereas plaids are creating during the process of weaving using color thread. Remember our mouse weaving fabric? That's what it's basically doing, creating plaid. Let's look closer to this fabric. This is what we call plaid. We can interpret it as a pattern. From here, we can simply understand how it was done. We put vertical thread purple into the loom and then moving horizontal thread blue through it. Something like this. As you see, we can call vertical thread warp and horizontal thread weft. After repeating and repeating the process, we have entire picture. Here we can see warp ends, weft ends and the edge which we call salvage. If we're going back to our friend mouse, we can see it's making warp and then it's making weft. Let's start to create plaid in Photoshop. First, open the existing plaid, either from internet or scanned one. Make a canvas a little bit bigger. Another visual trick. Any fabric artwork looks better if it's elongated vertically and start to recreate it. We think here is a warp and here is weft. Plaid also has a repeat and we can see here is a horizontal repeat, repeat from warp thread. Let's put vertical guides and here is vertical repeat, repeat between weft thread. Let's put horizontal guides. Let's make a new layer. I'm going to call it repeat layer and start to recreate warp thread. Choose Rectangular Marquee Tool, Feather 0, Style, Normal. Let's start from this light group of threads. Make a rectangular with width of this group and random length. Fill it with light color. It doesn't have to be exact, just represent the shade of the group. Then create next group with darker color. Then light again. I'll just repeat the first one. Drag with Ctrl, Alt, Shift. Then this narrow part with brown color. Then repeat these three again. Then this white bunch with brown. Thin dark part again. Repeating white group again. Don't concentrate on making exact lengths. We are worrying about the width only. See, we are recreating the whole repeat. Now, make a square selection of the repeat. As I said, the length doesn't matter. Just be sure you have selected the entire horizontal repeat. Then go edit, define pattern. Let's make a new layer. We call it warp layer. I even recommend changing layer name in the layer palette. Then select all, edit, fill, pattern, our pattern 100%, see, we have all layer with entire warp layout. Go back to repeat layer and start to recreate vertical repeat. Start from this stripe, make a rectangle with width of the group, again random length. Fill it with light color, doesn't have to be the same as warp. Then create next group with darker color. Then light again, repeat the first one. Then narrow part with brown color. Then repeat these three again, then this white bunch with brown. Thin dark part again. Repeating white group again. Then make 
the selection edit define pattern. Now make a new layer, we call it weft layer. Select all edit fill pattern, our pattern, and we have layer with the entire weft layout. Now we have warp layer and weft layer, but unfortunately it still doesn't look like plaid. Of course we need to make a weave, so we can see warp and weft layer in the same time. And as a word, we have to see warp going through weft, or if you like weft going through warp. For this purpose, we're going to use new tool, mask. This is actually my another trick. What actually mask does? We use masks to hide portions of a layer and reveal portions of the layer below. We are adding mask to the upper layer. In our case, it's weft but it really doesn't matter, can be warp as well. If mask is white, it doesn't hide anything from layer it belongs to. And we see the whole weft layer. Fill mask with black and weft layer is hidden, so we can see entire warp layer. Look! Now, if we fill only portion of mask with black, we can see portion of unhidden weft and portion of revealed warp. We can successfully use this option for weaving plaid. Go to repeat layer, zoom in and create texture which simulate real plaid weave. For now we can create the simplest texture. We call it plain weave texture. White square and black square. Next row opposite black square and white square. It's going to be our texture repeat. Select it, go to edit, define pattern, then go to mask then select all, go edit, fill pattern. Just be very careful, you are going to fill mask, not layer, so be sure to click on mask icon. And here we go, we have a real, almost real, plaid in front of us. We can achieve this magic using mask, little white squares showing upper weft layer, and little black squares are hiding weft and revealing warp layer. So, can we recolor this plaid as we did for prints to come up with different colorways? Easy! Duplicate this file, you can save it with different names. Go to Image Mode Indexed Color. Click Flatten Layers. We see 8 colors. Check yourself. If you did everything correctly, you'll definitely have exact amount of colors. Then choose any palette. Remember we talk about creating different palette and color stories in the lesson number 3, Color Reduction. For the first result, you can just choose any from Photoshop library. Go to Windows, Swatches. Then go color by color, the same way we did for prints and you create several beautiful plaids.
So now we know how to create plaids in Photoshop using plain weave texture. Next time we will continue to talk about plaids. We will talk about stripes as well and I'll show you how to use different types of texture to enhance your realistic look of plaids and beauty of your design. See you soon.